What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Kevin's Video Hub. Today, I am joined with my co-host, Zero to Hero, and I have broken the Dimensional Plane and I've, and I've entered a whole different universe as we have now have a new a new ho a new co-host with us for a special guest. We, we have ascended. We're, we're moving up in the world. Know, hi, we Dan. Have, we actually have friends. It's crazy. I do too. It's <laughs> insane. But hi, Dan. Yeah. Welcome. Hello. Hi, Dan. What's up? This it's is... me. I'm Dan. Yeah. Everyone, uh, why don't you give yourself a little introduction for everyone? Yeah, um, I'm Dan. Um, as you know, probably. I do art stuff um, on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, it's both Simply Dan Art, all lowercase, no capitals, no spaces, none of that. It's just all one thing. Um, I don't know which I'm more active on. Lately, I've been more active on Twitter because um, engagement is better there. But, it's, yeah. And it's also, good stuff. Oh, yeah. That's, this, this that's true. Money. This man this, 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 this guy is going to be doing... Uh, I'm going to be paying him to make some a thumbnail for me for my Jedi Survivor video. So, yeah. He's, he's got good I'm art. Also, he's I'm also going to be hooking up I'm gonna be cooking up Cabbage's banner Hell on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, let's go! Uh, well, so for the, here for this, what uh, what 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 piece of your art would would you like to be in the thumbnail for the video? We'll we'll figure that out. <laughs> ooh, I'm kind of ooh, that's a good one. Um, I just did my my Ben and my Miles, so ooh, maybe yeah. one of those. Dude, that that new Miles one was whoo! You yeah, made like that, that fucking popped off. I loved that new suit. That was that's and that's like his one of his like main alt suits in the comics right now. And that was that was a really cool uh, yeah. way you did that one. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah, I I took very heavy inspiration from that suit and um from I mean we're gonna be talking about it a little later, but with um with the new gameplay footage for Spider-Man 2, Miles does a attack that looks very similar to the Kamehameha. Dude. So, <laughs> so, so I wanted to, instead of doing like a a hoodie that kind of has like a that like ninja thing going on with like the turtleneck. Yeah, the collar. Him, yeah, the collar. I wanted to give him uh, something similar to Trunks's uh, jacket from Dragon Ball Z. Oh, all right. Well, here we'll be. So we'll we'll put the miles, uh, cabbage. Put the miles stuff in the thumbnail so people know what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay. They'll figure it, they'll figure it out as we go along. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so today we because last week we actually did our predictions for state of play, but now it actually happened. So we get to talk about that. Let's let's put it out there first. Um, the leak that we covered in that podcast aged horribly. <laughs> and I was like, I think maybe this two is, things. This is why we don't, this is why we actually a don't few. do links, leaks in our podcast. Cause this, because then it leads to it poorly aids things. It was a really things, funny. A few things were there though. Like, yeah, like, uh, Spider-Man, I think final fantasy was in there. Final um, fantasy. Uh, not, not, I seven. can't remember if it was in, the, no, I can't remember if it was in the leak though. No, it, no, it was like a Final Fantasy like seven something, but it, it, it what we actually got was something different. Oh yeah, it was yeah, re, uh, Rebirth was on there, but we got sixteen yeah. instead. Yeah, sixteen. Mm -hmm. I think um, it, I think um, Metal Gear was also on there. Was it? Was it on there? I can't. It was. I, it was well, on there. Someone pull up the leak. We probably should have had this beforehand to like uh, <laughs> to compare. <laughs> I think I still have we it. Are, we are masters of not planning. <laughs> okay. It makes it for more entertaining content. Exactly. So, so on the leak, I'm going to go through all the lists. Um, there's The Last of Us Factions. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> B quick, before I, you brought up The Last of Us Factions, real okay. funny news that I just can't, like, the hater in me of The Last of Us because it is the reason why we don't have Jack and Daxter. It's not yeah. the only reason. Just it it is. No, it, it is. No, 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 no. It, it, on, it is, it is on, the reason. Look. It is the reason, all right? There is no... No, 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 no. There is no other reason, all right? 
There is no other reason for this. This is this is why. You are lying and to yourself. I I will gladly accept that I'm <laughs> lying to myself because I am speaking the truth. I am not lying. You're going anyway, down a path I can't follow. Well, all right, all right. You want me to bust out the facts on this because there actually are facts about The Last of Us killing Jack sure. and Daxter. Sure. So. The, we actually do have concept art of Jack 4 being made, and that's what they were making before uh, The Last of Us became a thing. They were It was the, the team working on Uncharted 3 at the time, and then you had another team. Uh, it's kind of like standard uh, stuff for a big developer. You'll have the big team working on the main game that's going to come out, and then you have a smaller team working on the next game in like the concept stages and whatnot. Uh, and so they were working on a Jack 4 at the time, uh, and we actually have a bunch of concept art out there about it. I've used it several times before because it looks awesome. Mm. Um, but it was also going to be a much more realistic-looking Jack 4 than the previous games. They got about, like... They, they didn't get very far beyond the concept stages. Uh, we have concept art of Jack and Daxter and, what, and some environments. And then... At some point in the development, they realized, no, this isn't this isn't really working for Jack and Daxter. Let's just move on. And that's how The Last of Us came to be. But The Last of Us still killed it. So uh, like I, my vindication. That's not like a product of The Last of Us. That's the same. It is because my brain says it is. <laughs> all right. I am in. I, I need to place my anger somewhere. It's kind of uh, like how it's kind of like how uh, fucking Activision killed Shaba Games and didn't exactly let, didn't let Shaba Games do that Spider-Man classic concept that they want to do. But but I will give Beanox this: it, they kind of took that concept and did it a little differently with well, uh, not Web Shadows, um, Shattered Dimensions. Was it? Yeah, it was Shattered Dimensions. Yeah. So it is funny for me as watching The Last of Us factions that they initially they promised it. Uh, back as a separate game because it was in the first game it was part of it i actually do like uh when because i think uncharted had this as well when there is like multiplayer in these single player stuff it's kind of a neat thing uh to see and i remember i think the multiplayer was actually the only part of the gameplay in the last of us one that i actually enjoyed but um uh the second game i did enjoy the gameplay more uh but yeah, for the first game, I enjoyed the multiplayer more. But like, I also wasn't really, it wasn't something I was like, I really got to be playing this. It was like, I jumped on, tried it a couple times, and I was like, all right, it's neat. And then I walked away uh, <laughs> to go play Destiny and get addicted to that. But um, yeah, Naughty Dog initially said it was going to be a separate release from The, from the Last of Us 2. Lo and behold, recently... Um, it was announced that it was going to be delayed yep. uh, because apparently they showed it off to Bungie, which a smart choice to do because Bungie, uh, like as it, the last of us factions would be a multiplayer only game. It would kind of have to be more of a games as, as a service and you're really like two or not games as a service, sorry, a uh, live service game. Mm -hmm. And the best two in the business right now for live service games that are very good Fortnite is Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite or Destiny. Yeah. So you have pretty much two options. They went to, and because uh, Bungie, it, I, Bungie, uh, Bungie uh, through Sony, they probably worked together or it was just, you know, whatever other, hey, uh, you're, you're big, let's talk. Um, yeah. Bungie basically told them, yeah, this, uh, this ain't gonna work, Chief. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so they had to go back to the drawing board, and now everyone who wanted Last of Us Factions doesn't get Last of Us Factions. And so now I'm sitting here, like Loki from Thor Ragnarok. Yes, that's how it feels! Uh, <laughs> Last of Us fans. Listen, so. I think we could all say that The Last of Us Factions was our least anticipated game of this year. Oh, yeah, I forgot about it in, like... <laughs> I, I didn't. I even forgot, dude. Thing. Like I, I didn't even yeah. know it existed until last week. I, I forgot about it after they, at, like, after they announced the game. I was like, "Oh, cool, Last of Us." And I was like, "All right, I guess." Um, and then they said factions will be its own thing. I was like, "Huh?" And then I forgot about it. 
Like I literally I, like I, I knew I, nothing I, about I, it. I saw the news for it last week. I'm like, when was this a thing? I knew yeah. nothing. I did not even know of its existence. Personally, I I don't care. Like I I played and enjoyed the Last of Us two. I kill me if you want any like Last of Us fans. I never played the first game. I played the first part of the game and seen last part of the game, at, um, you know, on like YouTube a long time ago. That's it. I know nothing in between the first game, like from the first cutscene to the last cutscene in the game. And th- like, th- I don't, it's not as if I don't care because I like The Last of Us, but I'm not like a fan either. Um, I definitely think the show does what the game does. A little better, personally, in my opinion. Oh yeah, um, I think the, I think the show did it did it really well. I'm very excited for season two. I am very excited for season two. The show was honestly better than the game. Anyways, um, state of play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the leak the leak we got was aged horribly. But yeah, it's fine because we can actually talk about the actual stuff that came out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I'm looking at it right now. Um. Yeah, no. So, Last of Us Factions, Twisted Metal, Pratt. Pra- we did not see that. We didn't see that. No, did Pragmata. I, I don't know what Pragmata is. I don't know. We, what uh, I, I think that was supposed to be like a new thing, but yeah, we, uh, yeah. Resident didn't Evil see 4. That. We did see that. We did see Resident Evil 4 VR. Um, that's uh, true. Yeah. Snake, Snake Eater subsequent. That's, that's the Metal Gear Snake Eater game. Um, Silent Hill 2. No. I don't think that we saw Silent Hill 2. Mortal Kombat. They didn't show at the showcase. They they kind of just announced it on their own. Yeah, they did their own thing. Um Final Fantasy, I think 16. They showed that. Uh Disney They did, Dominion, yeah. No, I don't think that they showed that. Astro's Conquest, no. Half-Life Alex, no. Uh, uh, I don't remember. Oh, no, Death Stranding two. Yeah, Death Stranding two. No, um, Stellar Blade. Uh nope. Hades two. Sadly, no. Oh, sadly, no. Not. Very I, sadly, I, I, no. I, I saw the animation for that when that got announced. It was pretty really fucking good. I love that animation. But um, Hades two. Uh, Darkest Dungeon two. I don't. I don't think know so. what that is. I don't. I don't, I don't really that. know what that is. Goodbye, Volcano High. I don't know what that is. The Dishwasher Collection. <laughs> what? I have no Ghost idea, of, man. I'm pretty sure that Ghost one didn't show. Tale two? Ghost of what? Ghost of a Tale 2. Mm, no. No. Lost Soul aside. Oh, don't boy. No. Nope. Yeah, no. No. Kill Zone. No. Nope. Um, Ghost of Kamakura. No. No. Um Hell Divers 2. Yeah, that, that was there. That was? Yeah, it was. It, did I, I think blank? It was, it was Did you blink? Um, did I blank like this I is think why we was... should have watched the, the we we watched the state of play beforehand, <laughs> but again we're tailball planning planning in the community, so Yeah. <laughs> um there's also of course Marvel, Marvel Spider Man 2. Um and Dark Side. No, 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 yeah, but, but we got Spider Man. We, we got Spider Man. I, I was like genuinely I shocked about. because like there was there was I feel like they intended for a fake out at the beginning because mm-hmm. uh-huh. we had we we saw this we saw a fucking like random hunter hunting a beast and we had no I yeah. had no fucking idea what this was until yep, no. like it actually saw like Craven's designs like wait a minute. I, I like heard, I heard Sergey. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that was that. it. Like when I was watching it too. It, it's on my. Uh, I posted my reaction video, uh, or my like I highlighted that part of the stream and I posted it. And you could literally see me in the beginning. It's like, oh, all right, yeah, no, no Spider Man. I don't know what this is. It's just <laughs> some like, guy going through. It's just yeah. some and then dude. dude, you hear Sergey, and you're like, wait a second, look, hold up. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then. You just hear Craven's voice. You, he, oh God. God! That dude. design. That is the. That is my favorite Craven design. Far none. 
It is like, wait, like you don't beautiful. Like a Bowie Craven design and spectacular Spider Man. All right, listen. They tried. <laughs> they tried to do something different. They they tried to combine Puma and Craven, and I respect the effort. You want hey, okay? So uh, funny thing, I never knew who Puma was until I saw someone play through the PC port of Spider Man Two. That was the first time <laughs> I ever saw the character Puma. <laughs> Oh my god. I didn't know who Puma was. Like, dude, honestly, the biggest thing that Puma's ever done in the comics is pretty much be the reason why Peter and MJ talk about uh, talk about his secret identity and how Peter figures out that <laughs> MJ knows. Like, that's what? that's all he's done. That's oh all god. he's done in the comics. Because, uh, it, like, I remember the story. They were fighting. Peter, like, tried, uh, came back. Because uh, he got injured, he tried to hide. Puma was tracking his scent. Fa- uh, jumped into, like, was about to jump into his place. Um, and, like, the whole time uh, MJ's there, like, trying to meet with him. Like, hey, hey, what's up? And he, like, pushes her out. And then Puma jumps into his uh, into his place to fight. He still has the symbiote suit at this point, actually. Right. As well. Um, and so, like, they're fighting in there. MJ's, like, literally out of the door. And all she's hearing is, like... All she's hearing is all this, and then later, after they fight and wrap up, MJ comes back. She's like, "I know, Peter." It's like, "What? No, 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 I don't know." <laughs> and that's it. Like, no. that's that's it. That's it from Puma, really. That's like, funny. that's all he. That's all he's really done in the comics. It's like he's a neat idea, but, but like, listen, eh. if, we, if we go home and start questing Spider-Man comic decisions, we're gonna be here a while. That's true. true. <laughs> but going back That's to true. actual good Go Spider-Man, Spider-Man content. Two. Spider-Man 2. It's Hell a cool yeah. game. Oh it looks so good. cool. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they confer uh James Stevenson confirmed. Who's who's James not, Stevenson for he's, anyone? He's the um he's the uh the fucking shit, what is he? He he he's like the community dude. Like he he talks to the community mostly. I think oh, the uh, the uh, community manager. Yeah, I let me... think it's community manager. No okay. go. But he, yeah, he's someone... the community director. Yes. So he somebody asked him, "Hey, is this the final build of the game?" He uh, it, he sent a gift saying, "Ha ha ha, no." And, um, <laughs> I, and I was like, "For a for a on for like a non-final build, this looks really good." Oh yeah, like. But I you you could you could not tell me that. It like it was not the final build because I'm like if you told me that what it, it wasn't the final build I'd be like what you're lying yeah dude like for real I I would have I I 100 percent believe that this was the final build because it just looked that good yeah it was although yeah, I think like the very first like uh, Spider Man game dude, it looks the f- better than the remastered and Miles Morales on the PS5 oh that's yeah. crazy that I, for real. Insane. The the coolest thing, the funniest thing actually about all this though was that it spawned probably the greatest uh, article title I've seen in a couple years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the title is literally "Gamers Mad That a Spider-Man Game <laughs> Takes Place in New York." It's so funny. Like, where where do they want him to be in San Francisco? No, that's that's like <laughs> that's I, like if you want. They, they are want, not technically. They want him to be in outer space. They they are not gonna. I heard someone say, "Oh, Spider Man Two is probably gonna uh, take place in Simcaria because of you know the whole thing with Simcaria in uh, Miles Morales or whatever." I'm like, <laughs> "What? No, that's stupid, <laughs> bro." What weed were they cooking? I had no idea. <laughs> I think I need to know. Good and it, it's funny because like, this is like a reoccurring thing that's been happening for the past like week or so, where. Yeah. Gamers just realize, just figure out that sequels exist, and when they the real. same location from the first okay. game, they just go, "Oh my god, they're so lazy! They were using so many assets." I'm like, "Yeah, what a sequel is!" It's it's what a sequel is. Okay, and here's the thing: I I would understand if it was just Manhattan again, like for the for the third time, but they're doing the other islands, and and uh, in the PlayStation blog. Um, cause I read it because, you know, I, I'm a Spider-Man fan, but I, I tr- it's okay. I read, um, they, <laughs> they, um, it says that Queens is one of the few boroughs and I'm like, 
one of? Yeah, plural, dude. Plural? What else yeah. is there? Charles plural? Like Like what? Like that that's like really exciting because yeah. like the last time we ever got to play a Spider-Man game to and you got to go to like Queens or just a different island was Spider-Man 2, Ultimate Spider-Man, and Spider-Man 3. Those are the only two games, or sorry, three games where mm-hmm. you can go to separate islands. Granted, Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3, they were just a random smaller island, while as yeah. Ultimate Spider-Man, it was actually Queens. Right. Yeah. Um, Grant, you couldn't really explore all of it, just like around the area Peter lives in, but it's still cool. But with, you know, with Spider-Man 2, you can travel all of it, and I'm excited to see that. I, it's, I, I, oh. know, I know for a fact I'm going to be spending a lot of time in Queens, hopefully Brooklyn. I want well, to and that's, like, I think that's definite, like, part of the reason why you don't see a lot of Spider-Man games going outside of New York, because web swinging, mm-hmm. like, it's got to be fun to web swing, and if you're just, like, in one building, like, if you're just in, like, one story to two story building heights, it's going to get pretty, like, boring as well, yeah. and so that's kind of, I think that's pretty much why the web wings are actually were actually involved in the game so yeah. for for everyone let's let's run through what uh what major stuff we get in the in yes. this trailer so we get craven as an introduction uh who oh, is going to be it's a very awesome introduction i really love how they baited us with like this oh, yeah this uh the, this like, dude that nothing. looks like he like he looks like he would be the modern in quotes like he the modern like, he take. Looks like he'd be the live action Craven. Let's be yeah, honest. yeah. He he looks like the, how they would do a live action Craven. He has like this goofy side cut, and then um, uh, and like tattoos everywhere, and like the only bit of like leopard print fur is like on oh, his bracers. Yeah, and like so that's all he has. And then they just pull an Undertaker meme on us too. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Camera just pans, and you have this absolute shad of a human being it's like standing pig. there. Dude, he's, he's, pig. Cool. he's oh, no man. Dude. I love him. Uh, and so, yeah, he he's standing there. We get the drive for his side of the game, which is I'm looking for a a, a, a prey or some rival. Uh, very classic Craven stuff, which we love. We love to see that classic Craven stuff. Uh, and so the his homie or it's not homies. I would say it's like his pupils. I would yeah, say. I would say probably like his pupils. His I know a lot of people are. Lot they're, lot they're going to be. That, but me personally, I feel like I don't mind it. I don't mind. Yeah. you know, Craven wanting to teach other people his hunting techniques. When I think also, I think what they're doing too is taking from uh, the Spencer run uh-huh. as well. Oh, with yeah, yeah, um, I, I remember that. Fuck, what's the what's the name of that? It's another hunt arc. Um, um, we'll find it, but I I don't know, <laughs> not not last hunt no, no it's not last hunt. The, I I've seen a lot of people talking about yeah oh we're gonna be doing uh Craven's last hunt in this game I I'm like guys no I feel it's, like that's just very predictable it's, it's probably predictable. not I I it's probably not going to be last hunt it's not I don't see it going that far with it. Oh, it was hunted. It's uh, hunted is the story arc, where basically uh, Craven just rounds up a bunch of people, yeah. a bunch of animal themed villains, and it's a really good. Uh, it's a oh, animal themed villains very and Spider Man, and it's a very good arc. Um, I, th- I think Spidey has the black suit for that. He does. Yeah, and so it, I think that's going to be a cool one. Uh, we get a they they're basically telling him hey you want a challenge we have a new hunting ground for you to go to shows us new york where we have on there we have black cat prowler lizard um the other members of the sinister 6 that are in the raft spider-man yeah, and spider-man wraith shocker uh, he's shocker, out now. <laughs> dude, shocker in staten island <laughs> like bro <laughs> Um, um, and then uh, Doc Ock, I Duke believe, Stone. is also listed there. Yeah, Doc Ock is on the raft. So, like, yeah, the entire Sinister Six is on the raft right now. There's also Tombstone, who's also on there. Yeah, Tombstone was there. I think Lee was the only one not listed, actually. Which is yeah. interesting. Yeah, no, I didn't see Well, we Lee also didn't get... 
we never ca- caught a glimpse of it yet. I yeah. think they cut away before showing. Um, yeah, which could be possible. Um, but so now Craven has a new hunting ground, and then we cut to six months later, and now Craven is hunting the lizard, mm-hmm. where we finally get to see our first look at the symbiote suit. And you whoa. get to fucking parry, dude. You get parry. <laughs> it, this so symbiote okay, suit looks about, really good. I want to talk about the design. Okay, hit it. Okay, so as a character designer, you know, obviously you want to be able to ha- like have a very nice, clean, and simple design. You know, nothing too crazy, nothing, nothing too busy. But I think that this suit does like the whole um, quote unquote busy because obviously busy is like you know a word to kind of is like a negative. But this this uses that kind of sort of complicated look. And really plays into the fact that this is an alien. Like you can see, like with with like where the muscles will be and whatnot, like the biceps, the legs, especially the legs, heavy on the legs. Yeah. Which, the the studio that... bits, they kind of look like um like what what are what is it? Like tendons? So it it looks like if anybody's ever seen a xenomorph, it looks the suit looks like a xenomorph with armor plating mm-hmm. or what looks like alien armor as like an exoskeleton and then on the inside it has like i think i would call it a more like muscle it looks like muscle striations in there yeah which is very very cool um and the the thing i'll say too i have no idea like for as much as as people get on uh, modern yeah. Spider-Man stuff for like taking from Ultimate Comics more, while yeah, there's a lot in the Insomnia games that take from Ultimate, they take from Six One Six, they take from all over. I don't know how anyone can look. There's a big debate for a while of whether or not the symbiote was alien or man-made in this universe because we've gotten we've been getting teases of it before. In the yeah. previous games, because Harry Osborne has been sick and in a tank with the symbiote, uh, and there's a long-running argument of, oh well, this is the man-made one, and like this is, uh, and all that. <laughs> I don't know how anyone can look at this version of the costume and go, "This is clearly man-made," it's when it looks to be a regular suit, guys. Oh God! All um, right. <sighs> okay. Before we get to, to that, clothed. hold on. Before we actually get to that discourse, I actually have a prediction for the symbio and like it's hit it. Okay. Obviously, cra- it, okay. I don't know if it's they're gonna do what Spider Man Three did by having just crashed to Earth, or if they're gonna do like the spectacular route where it's like you know maybe latched onto something and it, it kind of like you know went to Earth with something, like you know fucking rocket ship. They're gonna do that, like. Um, mm-hmm. My son, the astronaut. Um, I think Oscorp, or like like an Oscorp team, is gonna find the symbiote. They're gonna they're gonna like contain it and take it to Oscorp and study it and like you know see see what it's capable of and see that it's capable of healing maybe and. Norman's going to see that, and he's going to be like, maybe this can work and help save my son. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll take that and use it, uh, like, re- which is why he uses it to, to Harry. I Obviously, you know, they're probably not going to do it like that, but I wouldn't be against it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I kind of just took the fucking plot of um, the, the fucking... The first movie of Venom by accident <laughs> because the Light Foundation finds a ship of the symbiotes and they take it. Wow. Okay. So that was an accident. Um, Spider Man 2 is going to be ve- uh, fucking Tom Hardy's Venom all over again. <laughs> oh. No. Oh my God. Anyway, I guess, so imagine, I guess imagine the symbiote going to appear as like, you are like a turd in the wind. Oh God. I, I that would be so <laughs> funny. That would be so funny. I do hope they do a, like the parasite uh, thing, like how they do in the movie. Because uh, fucking um... honestly, I I get the idea behind the symbiote being like actually talking to 
like verbally talking to a toast, but I think that might only work for a movie. I don't know how I'd like fuck. I don't know if that would work for like a video game format. Well, no, no, no. well, well, no, because um, Midnight Suns does it with the Venom DLC, okay. and when you when you first um, because after spoilers for those who haven't you know played Midnight Suns or anything. Um, good game, play it, please. I don't care if you don't like <laughs> fucking card games or turn-based RPG. They're re- it's really good, play it. Um, and I didn't, I didn't get the DLC, but I did watch, um, you know, a YouTuber I really like play it. And in the in like the first interaction between Spider-Man, the Hunter, and Venom, um, Spider-Man tells the Hunter. Um, oh, he, uh, blah 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 blah. He's like, he's just a parasite, and Venom's all like, parasite, and you know, it's like, I mean, you just go off. <laughs> and I, I feel like it, it could work in Spider Man Two. I don't, I, I think that maybe not Peter, because I, I'd say that after Peter takes out the suit, I don't know if they'll have him be, you know, you know, quippy, jokey again for after a while, maybe after the story, um. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying like make him like super depressed or whatever because that's not nah, do it. No, nah, do Peter, it. Peter always has to be miserable. Peter Parker Stop. can never be happy. Come make on, him... <laughs> you gotta follow Dan Slot's example. No, uh, that's okay. In fairness, that's not Dan Slot. That's just Spider Man editorial. You know what? That's fair. Yeah, you gotta follow <laughs> editorial over here. You gotta make Peter Parker can... miserable at every turn. You can be, you can be like Zeb Wells over there and have. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's move on. on. Move on. Let's <laughs> move on. Moving on. But, but um, we get we're, we're talking too much about Spider-Man comics. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> my fault. But but I, I I think that maybe Miles. Okay, okay now imagine this. Obviously, it'd be really cool to have Peter and Venom duke it out. But imagine if Miles and uh, Venom just duked it out because Miles having the Venom abilities. And I'm gonna have I, I think it would be cool if um, Insomniac does three weaknesses to the symbiote. Yeah, fire, sound, and electricity. Because in the Ultimate Comics, electricity is, is a weakness. But well, and also, also electricity is just another extension of fire. True. Like I know. <laughs> Avatar: The Last Airbender taught me this. Everybody. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. <laughs> Lightning bending. That's firebenders can lightning bend. Oh, it's fucking sick. It's another. It's an extension. This is how that's, we get it. <laughs> that's so cool. This is why you watch so Avatar: cool. Last Airbender. Exact educational man. Educational it should television. Be taught in schools. <laughs> it should be taught in schools. Um, but yeah, no, I just think because like obviously this is like a Peter Parker story, you know. I I disagree on that. I think it's going to be. Like I, the 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 really cool part about this is that this is a new symbiote story because we've never had a story where Peter is the mentor going through the symbiote saga. Yeah. True, this is the first time. And doing like, it. this is the first time that like Miles has really been around for this to like look up to Peter the way he does. And after his story arc in his own game, where he finally like a big thing was him. You know, Genki tells him. You know, every every time you say Spider Man, you mean the other guy. When are you gonna say it and start realizing that you're Spider Man too? Yeah, and like that's it's a really good arc for Miles in that game. Oh yeah, and now it's gonna get put to the test as you have his like his hero is now going through something which Yuri Lowenthal has stated that he uh, studied he studied um uh like. Subjects of addiction, subjects yeah. uh, like people who went Some through addiction, addiction. Uh, yeah, and symptoms of all that uh, to accurately get the portrayal for Peter in this. So yeah, that was something I oh. really enjoy reading about. Which kind of that also that gives awesome. us that gives us a uh, a look into what they're going for, and so now you have Miles who's going to basically watch his mentor go through an addiction. Yeah. yeah, and their their relationship is going to be like front and center for this game. Definitely, like fu- like you can even see like Miles just look at Peter through the actual like gameplay that we got. It's like, bro, this, this yeah. ain't it. This ain't it. Dude, 
Dude, when he threw, when <laughs> Peter just threw <laughs> that guy to the ground, Miles like was like, "Chuck the guy to the ground." When dust came out from the rubble, I was like, "Yeah, Whoa. dude, <laughs> Peter, yeah, Peter's <laughs> angry." Well, and, and so Miles that was like, "Whoa." That Yo. hits us with the uh, the beginning of that gameplay footage. Peter explodes out of what I believe is Kurt Connor's it, house. Yeah, it is. It's Connor's basement. Yeah. Kurt Connor's basement. The lizard. He explodes out of there as Craven's goons come hunting for him, and the symbiote wraps itself around him. And something, uh, an interesting detail on this is it has like before the symbiote suit forms, it has like this outer layer that like blurs over it and then smooths back into the suit so what i'm what i'm guessing from that is uh that goes along with a old leak or rumor from back in the day uh back in it was like two years ago wow. um, no yeah but that's still crazy two years uh yeah. where it was rumored that there would be a symbiote variant of every other alt suit in the game and while I don't know if it'll be a symbiote variant for every other alt suit, there, it, I think it's safe to say that there's going to be variants for you to choose from for the symbiote suit, like there is variants to choose from for the regular suits. And I think that's what I think that's what that little like blurry thing was over. So it basically can cover the parts of okay, here's the symbiote, and then it'll smooth out into whatever suit uh, you have chosen. I can that was so and, cool. mad, uh, like. How fucking like imagine. hilarious it'd be with a symbiote with the ghost spider. Oh, dude. <laughs> the ghost spider is Just fantastic. Imagine. Like, have you seen the ghost spider in the cutscene where Aunt May dies? <laughs> no. It's the, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, oh, man. No, but like imagine that. Because I'm assuming that, you know, they're going to be bringing back love. Um, the. A lot of, if not all, the older cast from the first game and also Miles' game. Yeah. Also, Which there's, there's going to be so many in this game. This oh, is yeah. going to be the most suits we've had since the first game. Um, they, they're they definitely going to be adding more suits. I really hope that they add more of Ben's costumes. Like his uh, official suit, need, his non suit. We need Ben Riley con- costumes, man. If, if there is one, man. Ben Riley costume in okay. uh, Across the Spider Man looks really nice. Well, also- All right, we we can't get distracted on that though. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about the movie. Um, um, we'll talk about it after the movie releases. Anyway, yeah. Um, I really hope that they, if they're gonna all, like do another version of Ben's costume, like his his Scar- his Scarlet Spider costume, I hope that they do the one where it's the the ripped up hoodie. Um. You know, like the, the I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. it has more of a ripped aesthetic. The the one from the first game is uh the modern uh modern Ben Riley suit yeah. where it's more of a cleaner hoodie uh that's in there, and the original one was a lot more tattered because Ben basically just went into a store, bought a Spider Man hoodie, and then ripped off the sleeves, mm-hmm. and then later uh Venom grabbed the hood and throttled him with it and so he ripped yep. off the hood <laughs> yeah um i think it would be cool to have two to have two of the scarlet spider suits uh one for the 90s fans one for the modern fans and his sensational spider-man suit and his beyond spider-man suit for mm-hmm. whoever likes both of those suits i would be wearing the sensational suit personally but the the thing I don't know about though is like I am very interested to see what they end up cooking with the symbiote suits because I want them to go yeah. n- like my favorite stuff is when I look at fan designs of the symbiote suit and where people take the alien part of it and go nuts with it and that is so much cool like the whole it's a cloth suit first off it like it never was stated to look like a cloth suit <laughs> in the comics until Felicia gives him a cloth suit. Uh-huh. actually like to wear in the comics even though like the one of the things peter assu- already assumes is that it's some kind of alien suit anyway right. that it's just like either alien technology or something super advanced and so the o- the thing that really makes him in the comics get rid of it is when he realizes that it's actually alive like it's an actually li- it's an actually living thing yeah. that he's been watching or that he's been wearing and that's what really like gets him to be like oh god no i gotta get it off and so there's a bunch of moments where this thing doesn't move like a cloth suit should and like moves no, around him. There's hell in the comics. <laughs> yeah, like there's 
like if y'all look up just look up like spider-man and black suit uh like uh with black cat and you'll see like he opens up a hole around his mouth that looks so like not cloth like and i'm like there's no way that this thing <laughs> actually looks cloth yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't understand why there's so many arguments for the symbiote being a cloth suit when it's set. It's been proven so many times that it's a fucking alien. Like, the, the only. I think the only times it's looked like an actual cloth suit is in Spider Man 3, where, like, okay, yeah, that one, like, literally, if you look at it, there's, you know, it's pretty much there's mimicking. It. Yeah, it's, it's mimicking like 100% uh the Raimi suit but just black with one different logo with two different I logos will also, I will say though also the eyes are different I will say though I think that that suit is the better like my personal favorite variation of the Raimi suit just because it's just black with silver yeah. webbing and the, the yeah that webbing. that does I look yeah, cool but even though, like the symbiote well, covers and, the original suit so it's not even the, well the yeah suit. it starts covering that and it's the same thing with uh spectacular at the start like yep. uh the spectacular suit literally just goes on top of his suit and then in the next episode it's acting like a like the symbiote it's not even covering his suit and the design is also changing to be uh, like where you see less of the elements of the original Spider-Man suit, like the webbing starts disappearing until yeah. the third episode, where it's gone completely. Also, this, and is, so, a weird, this is a this is a very random thing that I I thought about while re um, watching that show. Since we're on the topic of black suit, when he takes the suit off, Peter doesn't have his mask on. It, it, it's shown that he doesn't have his Spider-Man costume on. But then, after the symbiote is off him, he has his suit on. I don't know if that was just an error or if maybe like because obviously with what happened with the first the like the uh symbiote version two sorry <laughs> version one ver uh, version one symbiote it's just a recolor it's just a recolor yeah and um i think his back logo is also black too and that like the only the front logo is white i'm gonna be entirely honest i don't like that that's my only issue with the versions one <laughs> symbiote suit and version two <laughs> better because it's just I don't know. <laughs> but Continue. Yeah, but yeah, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe it's one of those things where it's like, you blink and you miss it. And um, it's like, he doesn't have his ma his costume on in um, when he takes the suit off. But what, but like, or before he takes it off. But once he takes it off, the th the, it's there. So I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, what, what the fuck? Did the symbiote give the costume back? Like, did it just spit it out? Yeah, I, dude, it's, it's, I, I can't answer you. I don't know. <laughs> but, like, it's, that is funny. Oh, man. Um, but, uh, I was I really the, can't. The, but, yeah, yeah, so, symbiote's the, the symbiote, fucking suit. Stop it. And <laughs> the design as well. Thank God it doesn't look like a cloth suit oh, because yeah. that would not mesh very well with the gameplay they're going for, where yeah, you have oh God, tendrils yeah. coming out. So, like, that would look really, like, it would be even dumber on Peter's part if he just thinks it's a cloth suit and he's got, <laughs> like, tendrils sticking out of him in combat. Yeah. It's like, nah. Like, <laughs> this, is, this thing. And it's, it's a fucking video game. You want it to be fun. Exactly. God, dude. Like, that's the weirdest thing on that account. It's like, I, I've i seen so many people going, when are we going to get an accurate adaptation of the Symbiote Saga? I'm like, you're oh, not hard. because, like, I'm like, you're not because the original Symbiote Saga is not an actual Symbiote Saga. It's just a costume. It's, it, yeah, it's just Peter wearing the costume for, like, a lot of issues. Fi he finds out that it's wearing him at night and then it's alive he gets rid of it boom venom yeah that, that's literally like it's very no, fast there's no like symbiote spider spider-man like arc there <laughs> there's like, no like it there's nothing of it affecting his mental state yeah. in the comics that was an addition from the 90s show. show exactly and thank god because that's a really good addition we like Shocker! that a lot I will chase you down to the ends of the earth, dude. I, if they if they do that in the game, I hope that they do it. <laughs> Wait, I will be honest. I'm more scared for Screwball in this. Oh, I'm, no. I'm, no, I'm 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 more scared image. for Screwball. I saw I'm that not. image where you, where you have like the Undertaker meme again, <laughs> but with Spider-Man behind Screwball. 
I'm scared for her because I like I know she's annoying, but I like that. That was the point, <laughs> and I love it. I just hope I, that she doesn't come back. I saw like okay, no. I saw Actually, no. I hope she comes symbiote back. Spider Man. I saw symbiote Spider Man standing behind us, like no, get out of there. What are you <laughs> Run, <doing>? run. <laughs> but uh, what were you saying, Dan? Um, I, I kind of hope that they do bring her back. Um, for one, um, you know, side mission, and but it's not a side mission; it's a cutscene, and it's with Black Suit Spider Man. <laughs> and and when when you go to talk to Screwball, she's like, "Hey, Spud," and he's like, he just said, "Shut up," and he grabs her, <laughs> just but, punches and, her in the face, like, no, no, he doesn't punch her. Um, like, um, like I like to think that maybe Miles just kind of steps in, being like, "Yo." Uh, oh, and it's gonna be great. Terrified. Like seeing, <laughs> seeing Miles have to deal with all of this bullshit that Peter's going through is gonna be great. Mm-hmm. This year, okay, this year for Miles is wild. He has Miles, to Miles has not had a bad <laughs> Spider Man at a like bad Spider Man adaptation, but yeah, here Dude. we are with fucking the actual Peter Parker. Having the worst run of Spider Man. Oh God, he his we comics, love it. His comics are awesome. His his he's and got then we two. We saw movies. fucking people like Nerdvotic say Peter Park, uh, Miles Morales is Miles Morales. Like get, get out of here. No. I dude, they were real. They were real for just having it be Spider Man and Spider Man exactly. and that Craven thing. So like that was that's so good. I remember looking at, like one of the first posts I saw was the racists aren't gonna like this one. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, true, I also really, really I really do enjoy the actual Spider Man uh, Twitter account. I don't know if I said this last podcast, but I just love the actual like Spider Man Twitter account saying Miles Miles is Spider Man, and the and- <laughs> made a dad. That, that was the that. best. That was the best. <laughs> Can I just what? say, I love, oh my god, I love that, um, you know, when Peter and Miles are talking to each other, like, they're just talking to each other, it's, yo, Peter and Miles, but when they're talking to each other, doing superhero stuff, it's, yo, Spider-Man, yo, Spider-Man, it's like, yeah, yes. it's real good, we love it, and, and, and it's like, it won't work, because, you know, blah, 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 there's like five flashes, two Superman, the f- fuck, <laughs> Oh. It's a great but, time. And yeah, dude, that combat, like oh with the tendrils God. coming around, I, we're, he's killing somebody, right? Someone's gonna die. Someone's gonna die. Let's Pe- be Peter's gonna kill somebody. I, I, I think that he's going to go to the extent of murdering someone for the sake of actually using Connor's blood to save uh, Harry, because I think that's why he wants Connor's. Is because he might have a blood, yeah. like his blood sample might actually save Harry. Oh, I don't know if it's going to be a a. Well, actually, okay, we have no idea, honestly, what it's going to be, so I can't really counter. I know, um, I know, <laughs> like, but I, I know, I know, uh, I know. Peter was talking about like I need Connors for Harry. Yeah, we need Connors oh. to save Harry. So I think that's going to be like I think the main drive of the game, at least yeah. behind that, like that fuels the rest of it, is Harry needs Harry has a ticking clock again. Um, somehow, you know, the symbiote gets out, Harry's still on the ticking clock, um, to save Peter. And the thing that I will say, I don't think the symbiote can save him, because I think if that was the case, and Peter found out about that, he would instantly, like, okay, here you go. Oh, yeah. For Harry to save him. Like, if he doesn't know anything about it. Um, and the other thing, too, as how they go for the symbiote, where we were talking about, you know, affecting his mental state... I saw something, and I think this is very true. I think it's going to be a parallel to Otto's from the in the first game to Otto's neural link. Yeah, where something it, along those lines. Yeah, it, it doesn't really like change them. It just exposes more of who they are, and like basically like that part of your brain that tells you, "Hey, don't punch this guy walking down the street next to you." <laughs> it's basically gonna like remove that part of Peter's brain in a sense. Right. Where he just starts making more and more decisions. That's like, oh shit, okay. That would okay. be pretty interesting. Like, oh, that that'd be really cool, actually, because just that nice parallel, and then having Miles be in the place that Peter was in, but only like 
he's not going to give up on Peter. He's going to yeah. keep trying to reach Peter. And I know, like, I, I've seen a, I've seen a lot of this. I know I, it, it's been all over. Uh, I know people are going to be like, they're going to do the this isn't you thing again. I'm like, yeah, what the fuck did you expect? Like, it's, it's the symbiote suit. Duh. <laughs> like, it's going to be, not, yeah, it's gonna be somewhere along those lines. I don't know <laughs> if they'll do a word for word. It, that might be a little too obvious, but. I think we'll work see. Work. I think we'll see the line in there at some point, uh, and then. But it's going to work because, yeah, that isn't Peter. We want to save him. Yeah, exactly. I think it w- I, I definitely think it would work better for this because ultimately, it's not really Peter. Like, yes, mm-hmm. obviously, it's driving out the worst <laughs> of Peter, but it's not really him. But yeah, like with Otto. Obviously, that just brings out more of that dark side from Otto that's always been there, that he said. Otto says um, that, like, you know, it is me. Or, or, or obviously, it's an illusion, uh, quote-unquote illusion. But I would have to assume that it really is, like, kind of Otto really just speaking, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I it's... Just, uh, it, it's going to be a very interesting way they go down with this, uh, with I, this suit. The other thing that I it? like about this story is that it, uh, like, I've noticed that the story, like the scale of the story, keeps getting smaller with the, with these games, right? I'm okay. A little, that. yeah. Like we had the city in the first one as the threat, and then we just had Harlem really as the threat. And in now, with now you just have saving Harry. It's just it's saving one people. person. Yeah, it's just trying to save people now. Yeah, trying to save. I, I friends. really do enjoy this, like how small are the scales of the stakes. The game with have each gone games. along. The, when, yeah. when when it's almost like they're going backwards, kinda with the scales. It's like usually it's, we, oh, it's smaller, and then it's bigger. Now it's bigger. Now it's it's bigger, bigger, big, small. It's it's like yeah, and I I like to because it also give it's like a nice kind of okay. We're gonna get you in with the first game. We're gonna get you in with a big thing because you know like you kind of expect it with the games of like okay, we're yeah. gonna go big because you know it's it's a game. We have a big world. Let's let's make it big. Yeah. Uh, and now we're gonna use the the city in miles. We're gonna we're gonna bring it down. We're still gonna go across all the city, but it's Miles' first time out, so we're gonna we're gonna give him. Like a breather for a second, give him uh, test his metal with one section of the city, uh, and then now he's passed the test, and now all right, here's the personal stuff. What happens yeah. when? What happens when your mentor becomes kind of the bad guy? Because yeah. I like I dude, there's going to be a boss fight between Miles and Peter. Uh, oh yeah. I don't know. <laughs> now okay, now here's the thing I wanted to ask. Who do you think the the venom in the teaser will actually be? Ooh, so Ooh. so Insomniac has done this before, where they've hidden the, they've hidden an antagonist from us, like the main antagonist from us in the marketing. Yeah, where in the first game it was Otto. They really they really marketed up uh, Lee as the villain, uh, and then for Miles they. They mostly marketed uh, Roxxon and New Form as it, and they kept Finn as a uh, out of all the marketing. Here, what I think we have an interesting thing on our hands is the antagonist is there, as you know, we have Craven being marketed and we have Venom, but the thing being kept from us is who's underneath. Ooh, exactly. That's so, what's interesting. Because I th- there are three predictions. People mm-hmm. think it'll be Ven- uh, Peter. Or Harry or Eddie, I think personally, um, and this is only because I really, really would love this um, specifically for Eddie. Peter, we'll we'll get a glimpse of Venom through Peter, and then um, maybe it'll go on to Harry, and he'll become Venom, and after that, Eddie will get the symbiote, which will lead into the lethal protector shit with like. A spinoff game, like, hmm. with, like, I don't know, like a spinoff uh, lethal protector game. I don't know if they'll do it. If they don't do it, I won't be angry. 
Um, <laughs> I think I just think that would be pretty interesting to be able to have a Lethal Protector Venom spinoff game. Um, I don't know if we get happen. spinoff. I think we might get DLC though. DLC, oh okay. If, if it yeah. Down, well, we'll def- I, th- I mean, we got DLC for Spider Man, uh, so we'll probably get DLC. D- and I don't think Venom is like the thing is. I don't think Venom's a big enough character in this sense to get his own spinoff game like Miles did. True, that's fair. Um, like, plus, what could you do with him with this game? Well, I guess that's unfair to say. Like, like you can definitely, getting? like you can definitely do stuff, but I don't think they would like. I don't think they'll fully de- like devote everything to a Venom game. Um, yeah. it would definitely be like DLC, where it's like maybe like the story is like you know two to three hours long, and it's like or the DLC is like yeah. two to three hours long or something. Yeah, which like that that I think is good, but like the big thing. It's six thirty. Recording. I'm recording. I'll be down. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be down. <laughs> like, um, sorry. Uh, you can just edit this part out. I have to be... I have to cook dinner soon. Okay. Um, so okay. I will be leaving the, the podcast in a bit. But uh, continuing. I... Sorry, I'll give you a three, two, one. I think what uh, we'll be ending up getting is similar to you. Is like we'll get a taste of Venom in Peter. Because uh, I think like that would be a really cool way to go especially because we'll have a boss fight with him for sure um but my question more on that is are we gonna play as miles and have peter as the boss fight or is miles going to be the boss fight or is it going to like is it going to like switch back and forth this is where my fun idea comes in because i like being different so what i think right what i think is that you are going to start off as Miles, but you are not going to win this fight. This is not a fight for beating Peter as in the symbiote. This is a fight for survival. And you have a timer. And when that oh, time, you have to survive that timer. And when that timer runs out, Miles decides, take me instead. And he surrenders himself Ooh. to the symbiote. And then you switch to Peter, now having to beat the shit out of Miles. <laughs> I've seen it, dude. I've seen so many people getting it. They're like, dude, can we beat up Miles in this? I'm like, why? No way. I don't want to. Like, I don't want to beat up anyone in this fight. That's like, the thing. Now you're, now you're struggling as Peter in like your normal like Spider-Man suit to fight Miles as he's now surrendered as Venom. Like this oh my a god! Venom boss fight as Peter, but at the beginning you are Miles fighting Peter in the symbiote suit, but you have to survive a timer, and once the timer's up, Miles decides to surrender himself to the symbiote. What I'm also curious yeah. about is, uh, like I think, I think we're gonna get some sort of internal fight too, uh, in Peter, like internal boss fight with Peter, because they did that as well with, um, with Lee. Uh, and like the uh, in a certain section where like we go inside, and I think part of it is we'll play as Miles in the boss fight and like mostly fight him, uh, fight Peter, and by the time you know we we beat him, we get his health bar down. But then in the cutscene, it'll probably be annoying for some people because you know losing in the cutscene can be annoying sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, it'll we'll we'll go over. It'll start. It'll shift over there. Peter gets the upper hand as Venom. He's just like he's wailing into Miles and like getting the upper hand. And then, boom, we cut inside and we'll get something like spectacular where Peter fought against the symbiote inside his head to like oh. break free. Why? Because this is his like it, it'll be more. I think it'll be more in line with him. We'll get some auto stuff in there. Uh, where I could totally see them like visualizing the symbiote with Otto's voice at some point. Yeah. Um, despite, you know, like, well, we know we're going to get Venom fully with Tony Todd voicing him. Of course. Um, which I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Gonna, God, this can be so good. Uh, if anyone doesn't know I, who Tony I, Todd I is, if anyone doesn't know who Tony Todd is, go look up, uh, Zoom from The Flash season two and you'll hear his yeah, voice. Yeah, also, it's great. That's going to be awesome, man. I can't wait. 
Uh, but okay. yeah, we'll we'll get a swap hope. over. Uh, we'll get a swap over to do with that, and that's how it's gonna break free. And the boss fight will be like close to some bell tower or something to give us that imagery yeah. as well. Well, <laughs> I think we're gonna get it. Oh my god! I, I okay. So Yuri Lowenthal is one of the most talented voice actors. I have no doubt that that when Peter has a symbiote, the symbiote in his head will probably sound like like Yuri doing his his Black Suit Spider-Man voice, but maybe um or maybe his his Sasuke voice. He'll probably do a Sasuke voice. The the Sasuke um, voice is gonna be great. Okay. So I rag on Naruto. Um I, I rag on it because I don't care um that much about <laughs> it. Um but and I'm only biased because um, Yuri Lowenthal is one of my favorite voice actors. Yuri Lowenthal in that show steals the show, literally. Like, Sasuke as a character is whatever, but Yuri Lowenthal's performance in that show is really fucking good. Um, and for those who are interested in watching Naruto, uh, don't. It's a waste of time. Um, as someone who wasted time watching um, original Naruto um, and bits and pieces of Shippuden, um don't it's a waste of time if anything watch literally anything else <laughs> except for sort of online anyway um but yeah no i think yuri's gonna do um like maybe when peter has a symbiote he'll do the symbiote voice but maybe once it's off it will be tony todd doing the symbiote shit and yeah like I, don't I think, think Venom is gonna. I don't think Venom will appear until a little later into the game, like the third act, maybe of the game. Yeah. Because I I agree. Because I have no okay. So I'm not. I don't want this game to be so long that it overstays its welcome. Um, I would assume that the game is gonna be like similar in, in length of, to I the think first similar one. Similar in length to the first game, just longer. Because of how big the map is. Yeah. 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 Like, there's more and, room for like, exploring, and, but like story wise, it's probably going to be yeah. story wise. I would assume oh, it's dude. Like a little longer than Miles Morales, but shorter than PS5 with Miles. Well, oh, dude, we gotta find all of Peter's backpacks in Brooklyn now. <laughs> oh fuck, you're right. Oh yeah, I forgot about <laughs> Brooklyn. I took a vacation to Brooklyn. Oh wait, sorry, I meant Queens. I meant Queens. <laughs> That would be sick. That would be cool would, if we get to see just, just like just like you know they, they they bring it back and we get to see more stuff. Oh, what if that's how we, um, you know, learn about Gwen and the Insomniac universe? Because they they've clarified, um, Gwen doesn't die or hasn't died, and I'm like, oh, they clarified that she exists. They didn't clarify she exists, but they did clarify that she, uh, like they were like, um, who said that uh, she died in our universe? True, um, like, dude. Sp- Spider Man Twitter is gonna have a meltdown when they find out that bitch didn't die. I oh my god. Okay, so I actually said this in, um, under a Twitter thing where someone where someone says um, it is it, like I am okay with um, oh yeah it's Peter not experiencing the uh, death of Gwen Stacy, and I said I personally think Gwen Stacy should be more than just the bitch who died. <laughs> Well, because the the th- the main thing with her death is that it was just she something was unexpected. Well, no, no, no. Like if you look at it on like the the story level, the effect oh. of it is pretty much Goblin comes back to Norman, and Norman realizes, oh yeah, wait, I remember this. I know Spider Man's identity. I'm gonna go kill his ass. He goes to Peter's apartment and just finds Gwen there, and is like, right. okay, I'm gonna take her now. And so he just takes her, and then he ends up killing her. Right. And so in the story, the death is pretty much just, Peter, sometimes tragedy happens to you, and there's nothing you can do. Like, even if you try to save it, there's nothing you could do. Yeah. And it was just a random, like, it was just kind of a, a, a stroke of randomness that's like, he couldn't prevent it. Even though he saved her, he still, like, wasn't good enough to, say, to, to save it. So it's, it's a moment of, like, maybe I could have done this better. Maybe I could have done this better. Maybe I could have done this better. That he always thinks back to. The yeah. glorious thing about Insomniac is that we've already gotten that moment with Aunt May's death. Yeah. Where yeah. there's so yeah. many moments in that, like, the impact of her death is pretty much, 
I could have done, like Peter could sit there, think back at the events of the first game and go, if I had done any of this stuff better or differently or faster, Aunt May would still be alive. I would like, like to I would, see that. Like, I'm not saying that I want to see him grieve or anything still, but I do still want to see that, you know, like those moments of weakness with Peter. Because oh, yeah. with, this, with this Peter, he's definitely not as emotionally stressed out person as like oh other, yeah uh, interpretation like he's a lot more he, level-headed he's, he's, he's a lot more, he's way closer like, to spectacular peter where he's pretty level-headed like he's he's still like sometimes his emotions will get the better of him and like you yeah. know the anger will come through but for the most part he's pretty chill versus really like six one who holds back but yeah. like versus versus like you have the original oh, okay. comics, Peter, or yeah. Ultimate Comics, who will like straight up tell people to kill themselves <laughs> like, oh, when yeah, they're mad. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> it's so oh, funny. Jesus. But like, yeah, like I don't, oh, yeah. I personally don't like Peter being such an angry asshole. I don't like, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just a me thing. I kind of like the idea of Peter always being that like inherently good person. But he, of course, has his faults because he's just a person. He's a regular yeah. guy. Yeah, and, and it makes him even more terrifying when he's actually pissed off. <laughs> like, run, Shocker, wanna... run! <laughs> if there's anything, I, I really hope that with the story of Spider-Man 2, it, we really get to, like, you know, see more of Peter's hurt. Like, you know, like, I'm not saying misery porn. I don't want it. <laughs> I'm sick of it. But just... We... We don't want like another like it. It would be like in if the in the next Spider Man movie we spend like a crap ton of time or like half of the half of the runtime is dedicated to Peter standing over Aunt May's grave and being like, oh man, you know, like what was me stuff, and it's like, all right, bro, we oh, get it. Like, it's like it's more, like I want moment like you know obviously some moments of maybe Peter you know looking at a picture of Aunt May just silently looking. And put or like, you know, like what would she down. do? What would what would Aunt May would, do? Kind of thing. Yeah. Like, like that. That would be really good. Yeah. And you know, like I feel like, and I'll be and like in in um in the first game, like you can kind of tell that Peter. I'm not. I don't know if I want if like move on is the right word, but like, um, he doesn't dread over Uncle Ben. Like, oh, all. it's so refreshing! It's so refreshing and so true to the character at that point. Like, 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 if you go to his grave, he's like, "I miss you, Uncle Ben. I'm gonna do. I'm doing you proud." And it's like, that's perfect. Yeah. And like, and I'm when, so glad in that first game, there's barely a mention of him. Like, imagine no, no, a Spider-Man sort without Uncle Ben. Oh, they mention we... him. No, but like, they mention him. Every now and again, but they don't dread on it or anything. Right. Like May, May looks May is okay. May's contempt because, like, I lo- oh my god, I love that they gave um, Aunt May her thing. You help someone, you help you help everyone. Oh, that was so good. It's it's my it. I would say it's almost as good as the great power, great responsibility line. Personally, yeah, I would say it's almost as good as it. I love it. Um, uh, one th- uh, before we keep going, fellas. Unfortunately, I must cut this short because I have to cook dinner. No. Uh, so I will I will leave you two to co-host the podcast. You you got this. Okay, you're yes. leaving. You. Get out. What? Yeah, what? Yeah. No, you you can't do this to me. I. <laughs> <laughs> he just fucking Fired. cut there. He just cut there. That's awesome. Uh, he cut this great. But anyways, um, back to uh, Uncle Ben. I I really do I really do like anime and anime uh-huh. influence in the Spider-Man PS4 story, and it really does, it really is telling, see how good of a story you can tell for Peter Parker when you don't mention Uncle Ben. Ever, like, here's the thing, I don't think you need Uncle Ben anymore to tell a good Spider-Man story. At this point, M.A. is, like, could be used for that, like, as a Uncle Ben catalyst. Right, exactly, and even then, it's like, it's like, that's the thing that really upsets me sometimes when I look back at all the MCU Spider-Man criticism is that I don't think you necessarily need Uncle Ben for it. Like, because I think the more you use Uncle Ben to tell a Spider-Man story, the more you're being formulaic. And that creates problems. 
Yeah, like, I understand, like, for people who, you know, I understand the importance of Uncle Ben to, for Peter and for Aunt May. Um, and it's important to understand, you know, uh, why Peter uh, became, you know, Spider-Man the hero and not the not continue his pursue in um what is it uh entertainment right um without uncle ben for peter spider-man wouldn't be and i i i understand that and it's important however for an adult peter parker 23 24 year old adult he would learn from that he would understand and he he knows not to look the other way he knows uh that um to be that friendly neighborhood spider-man all that um and that's i feel like that's like just that is the step in the right direction for character development yeah exactly because if he doesn't move on and i'm not saying forget about uncle ben i'm not gonna i'm not saying that at all but him moving on from you know dreading his death or whatever like being like it's my fault like if he moves on from that that's the right that's the 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 step in the right direction for his character development and because he hasn't moved on from that or it feels like he hasn't moved on from that in the comics it he feels stagnant and i feel and and um i feel like the game even the mcu movie um those were definitely the uh, i mean i definitely understand the criticism for the mcu movies it's because he's still so young so you would think he would still be kind of hurt a little bit i do understand that to an extent but then again it's like aunt may is so important to like just as important to Peter in the MCU as Uncle Ben is yeah. in any other version. Same with how it is incredibly important to Peter in, you know, the games. Yeah, and uh, that's why um, I do enjoy, like, Peter's level-headedness in, like, the, the actual game. Insomniac games. And I do yes. I do like how, was, like, he's starting to slip, but he's not... He's starting to slip, and that level-headedness is kind of going away as the symbiote is taking over. Yeah. I, I especially and... love that little uh, like line of dialogue where uh, Peter goes, he got away from us. Where you think he's talking to Miles, but like there, there's a lot of room there. There's a lot of room there to think he's actually talking to the symbiote. In that oh, yeah, Cause, because... Um, you know, there's like my theory and also, uh, not even just my theory anymore at this point, a lot of people's theories now is, I don't think that's when Peter gets the symbiote. He definitely got the symbiote a little earlier no, in the game. No, this is definitely, this is definitely this when is, he's late, later down the line in this. Yeah. Scene. It's like, cause this, this is like is, six months between from when Craven starts heading to New York to where we actually get the gameplay for it. So we, we I can will definitely say tell too. that the, he definitely gets a symbiote a lot sooner than us. Yeah. I will also say, too, from the way that Peter is reacting to the Hunters and how he says Craven, I don't know if... I'm assuming that, obviously, he's never met Craven before uh, the first game or anything. Right. But it's clear that this isn't his first time running into Craven in this game. Yeah. I think that he's run into Craven before and his hunters. You know, because of their hunt for uh the lizard. Yeah. I think that it didn't take six months to get to New York for the hunters. I think that maybe um like between that cutscene and the gameplay, yes, there it is six months in between. But just from that bit of dialogue for, uh, from Spider-Man saying um, uh, this, li this lizard un hunt ends now. I'm like, so this has been going on for a while. Yeah, this isn't yeah. the this first is like, time. Th this definitely feels like more mid-game where this where the actual yes. like, footage that we see in the state of play is taking place. Like th This feels yeah. a lot more mid-game stuff right now. 
it's kind of like with um the E3 2017 um um mission or even the raft mission um in Spider Man PS4 um with the construction site um. Peter um, goes to the construction site and um, he gets, you know, call from Yuri, um, and, and um, he interacts. He 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 sees Martin Lee in, um, in that mission, but in the actual game, um, he um, he gets a tip from Jeff from Jefferson Davis, right? And he goes and before the mission starts, um, it's Jefferson that calls him. And it's all like, yo, you got this? And Peter's like, yeah, I got this. And in the actual mission, it's not Martin Lee on the helicopter. It's um, it's just a random inner demon. Boy, yeah, no, so, Insomniac really likes to tease a lot of really, things. Yeah, they're really good at Their hiding marketing things. marketing is like, fucking amazing. Granted, really it took like two it. years to move away from that one frame. <laughs> yeah. But... I want that to be... Uh, is that the official cover art? I really mm-hmm. need to know if that's the official cover art. I don't think so. Fuck! But I... Um, I will not get... I I don't doubt at all that it's going to be on the back of the cover art. It's going to... Or look, even... It's oh, going to okay, be the so, disc. It's going to be the so, disc. No, I don't think it's going to be the disc because for the first game in Miles' game, on the disc, it's the, the emblems of the characters. Okay. I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be the white spider with the back background. But, the back okay. background, okay. the black background. Um, no, I think that they'll probably have that as an alternate cover art because you know how um, some PlayStation games have alternate color uh, cover arts, right? Yeah. Uh, the first game had a cover art, like an alternate cover art from one artist, and the back of it is just the logo. And Miles's game, uh, the alternate cover art is another thing drawn by another artist and the back the back of it is a screenshot of the game or yeah a screenshot from the game or a cinematic screenshot i guess right um while at, i think that in for the second game it's going to be the same case where the front is going to be artwork but the back will probably be a screenshot i think it's going to be the the still that we always see I, before the new one i i really want to see just some form of that one frame be put somewhere on the actual box cuz <laughs> holy shit that would that would annoy so many people and it's going to be amazing i would not be annoyed i would i would find it hilarious i'd be like oh. Oh, it's yes. amazing. It's hilarious to watch Wonder. like Twitter uses Crash and Burn. But anyways, so <laughs> overall, what are your what are your like like what is your hype level for Spider Man Two right now? Um, for the Dragon Ball fans, over nine thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th- I am really excited for this game. This is going to be like one of the. This is like legitimately one of the like most anticipated things I wanted of this year. It's I mean, the, aside from Spider Verse, this is the most like I I would def, like I love I love Spider Verse I do, but when it comes to video games, it um you know I'm more of a video game person, less of a movie oh, guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm more I'm mostly excited for this game than I am for like the movie. But well, I am still. You know, that, that's understandable. That's under look. As long as you're more excited than those two things than the Flash, I think you're in the green. Oh my god! <laughs> did you speak of the Flash? Act, the Flash. The Flash. I actually, did you see that tweet? Did you see that tweet? No, no, I haven't. I haven't seen many things other than, other than uh, um, the fucking um. Uh, there's no there. There's no one else. I'd I'd rather see. Uh, yeah, the Flash that's the Miller. tweet I'm talking about. Like, uh, the fucking director of uh, the Flash, yeah, looked at Ezra Miller ready. and be like, "There's no one I'd rather have as the Flash than Ezra Miller. They are a great addition, and I cannot picture anyone else." Meanwhile, Grant Gustin over here with his decade-long run as the uh-huh. Flash. <laughs> like, I don't like that show, but his performance is really good. Yeah, no, that's like one of the only, that's like one of the most consistent things about the Flash that Grant Gustin's performance, like, fucking killed it. Like, 
And apparently I saw that um, they use a CGI zombie of Christopher Reeves Superman. And I really hope that's not true. I really that, hope it's not true. I hope that isn't true. I'm I'm really hoping that isn't true. That's gonna be really it, bad if it is. I, but it's okay. I, it's okay. Leaks in this podcast have been known to AIDS poorly like milk. So True. That's true. That's true. Like if they if they do bring Superman or a variant of Superman, I would want and, and it's supposed to be um like a reference to um Christopher Reeve without Having to zombify the man, let him rest. He played, like, I have my issues with the original movies. Um, obviously, the first one being the strongest one um, with a lot of weak stuff in it. But again, product of the time, it was the yeah. 70s. Yeesh. Um, Christopher Reeve played Superman splendidly. And without him, I don't think that we'd be able to get, um, you know, the blueprint for how Clark Kent and Superman could be separated. Right. Um, Brandon Routh, or Ruth, however you know, however you pronounce it, um, he played a a Superman and Clark Kent similar to that of Christopher Reeve. Of course, I think that he was able to make it his own, and he he did it spectacularly as well. Um, I think he did it like he was able to be a better Superman with when he was Kingdom Come Superman in the CW. And he was, he, I look at him, I look at Brandon Routh and I see Superman as well as I see Harry Cavill and Tyler Hoechlin. I see Superman and I think that, um, I would rather them have someone that looks a lot like, um, Christopher Reeve. As opposed to just yeah, zombie. <laughs> yes. zombie CGI basically. actors are the absolute worst idea. Like, I, yeah, it, I don't get me wrong. I understand the idea behind it. Like, it's fine to be, but I want to use the word respectful, but even that doesn't sound right. No, I want to no, say it's fine to be appreciative. It's... Of it's, their work? It's, it's an interesting idea and I know that they want to try getting their technology like you know the technology there. It just feels disrespectful. Obviously, like with um Luke from uh the Mandalorian when we saw him, um and also the book of Boba Fett. Mark Hamill's still alive, thankfully. I'm thankfully. Yeah. And also um Harrison Ford. But they have actual actors. No, but even then, like the thing, the thing about it is that uh, the actor that they used the that they used like his face. He, he looks like a young. Like, Mark he Campbell. actually looks like a genuine like Luke Skywalker. Like I don't under, like just recast your goddamn characters. What is so you're bad allowed, about that? You're allowed to use young actors for yo- like a young version of a character. I it's I'm not so... bad. Like. If there's one thing I'm really glad that obvi- okay, I I'm probably like an outlier here. I like Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I think it was a really nice um, you know, movie to respect the loss of Chadwick Boseman. Um obviously Chad I wish I I wish that we still had Chadwick Boseman around so we can have just one more movie with him Bye. as T'Challa. But cancer's a bitch. Yeah. And um, because of that, we lost a genuine legend. Um, they did not CGI him. They yeah, did I'm not really CGI glad him. That that's the one thing they did not do because that would have been fucking awful. Like I, I would have been, been so livid. upset, genuinely angry. Like it would have been one thing if they were able to get just one scene with Chadwick um, before he passed away, but. I'm also not. I'm also not mad that we just weren't able to get it. Like his presence is felt in that movie, yeah. and very important to the movie. And it's definitely the heart of the movie. And I genuinely love that movie. Like unconditionally love it because it right. it's an incredible story. The cinematography is amazing. The the score, the act, everything is incredible. Um, 
even if the actress of Shuri is a little problematic, um, it's genuinely a spectacular movie, and I'm so glad that Marvel doesn't do that by fucking bringing them the light. Like for a the, company the that's under, actors, is, yeah, yeah, I, like I for a company under. <laughs> For for a company that's under Disney's um thing with their with um their um movies and shows and uh animation, I'm surprised they haven't done that. Like just CGI zombify actors. They o- the only time they ever use the CGI face stuff is to de age actors. That is cool. I really like yeah, that. The de aging technology is awesome. very well done in. Yes. Movies and I, I do like the de aging aspect. It's when it's when you who try to resurrect actors is <laughs> when you're pushing things. Like yeah, first they did it with fucking Tarkin in Rogue then they did it with Carrie Fisher. They did Tarkin in Rogue One, Carrie Fisher in Rogue One, Carrie Fisher again for Rise of Skywalker, and then they just AI generate James Earl Jones' voice for Kenobi. <laughs> what? Yo, wait, you no, you didn't know that? No. Oh fuck! Oh, this could be a great story. So, oh god. <laughs> so, oh fuck, I dropped something. But anyways, um, so James Earl Jones is uh eighty plus years old and is very old and yes, a little too old to be playing the role of um Darth Vader, but uh-huh. they want to bring Darth Vader. So what did they do? They used the AI-generated voice for Darth Vader in Kenobi. Isn't that crazy? Don't you don't you love don't you love Disney? That makes me really angry. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me genuinely angry. Oh, the I'm main so of- glad. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad yeah. that you can just now hear this. Yes, he's old, <laughs> but I'm sure he's still capable of doing it. Or is he not? Is he just personally not able to do it? He, he, I, I think I don't know like the full scope behind it. I don't know if they used AI to enhance his voice or just used AI to use all just. of his lines. But because like here's the thing, he has a fucking voice filter on, so you yeah. wouldn't be able to tell that much. Like, even, I mean, even that now, it's still it is a lot with the AI generation that you can tell. What is human and what isn't? So it, I never so, know. I never noticed. If I you never go back and watch it. it, you might be able to notice. But yeah, no, Disney is nefarious for like making zombie actors. I'm surprised they're doing it with. I'm surprised they did it with the Flash. But let's be honest, the Flash was a shit so from the very beginning, considering that it took yep. like five plus years of production. <laughs> oh God. So yeah, the, I feel like the, this movie was always like doomed to begin with before yep. Ezra Miller like it terrorized the entire state of Hawaii. <laughs> Holy shit, poor Hawaii, dude. I know, right? But yeah, uh, oh boy. On to one controversial topic to another. So they just recently... <laughs> so you like DreamWorks, right? You're a big fan. I'm a big fan. I've I made a, a lot fan. of DreamWorks videos. Are you a big fan of yeah. DreamWorks? I like DreamWorks. Do you love live action movies? Live action remakes? No, actually. Well, funny no. story about that. Oh no. <laughs> so I as you all know, there is currently a How to Train Your Dragon live action remake in production, and I've already spoken my Hatred about that in a different video, but casting just got announced for Hiccup and Acid. And oh boy, <laughs> who was it? Ah, uh, fuck, who was it? I I remember I I remember it was, I was on a tweet that was a uh, that was linked somewhere. I'm trying to find it. No, I'm losing. I I have no plans. Uh, let's see. Okay, this has got to be it. Okay, well, one of them, I know one of them is the, is the actress that played, um, uh, fuck, what was Joel's kid at the beginning of the Last of Us show? Um, Sarah. 
Yeah, Sarah. Yeah, that's the actress for Astrid. Let that sink in for like a full minute. How old is she? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm trying to like actually find the official tweet because I can't find it anywhere for some reason. Yeah. This is I, again. I'm ta- I'm great at planning. I'm a great I'm a great podcast host. You're 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 great. Uh, I'm a great I don't know. Man- what's- I'm a great manager. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> This is quality content you're watching. Just, just listening to me scrolling through Twitter for about like two minutes. Quality content. Where the f- I actually can't find this. I know it's here. Disgusting film. You, you, you're betraying me right now. This. <laughs> Have you seen that troll account on Twitter? Disgusting films. D- there's like fifty troll accounts for disgusting films. Let's be honest. Oh God, there is. I thought that there was one. There's so many others. It's ridiculous. Uh, okay. Uh, how to train your live action cast? Where is it? Ah, uh, okay. Here it is. Mason Thames and Nico Parker. Mason Thames is Hiccup and Nico Parker is Astrid. Why? No idea. So for those of you who don't know, Mason Thames was known for the black phone and um, that's like his biggest role actually, the black phone. I haven't seen the black phone because I'm a, I'm a little bit when it comes to horror movies, but I do know... I do know Sarah from uh, The Last of Us. Yeah. And, uh, I don't see it. I don't see it one bit. I... I'm not... I'm not... Okay, so... I personally do not care about race swapping an original character that's, okay, and that's originally fine. white. Wait, this is, this is, I, I, I need to just point this out right now before Twitter cancels me. This is not all race thing. This is just because I don't understand the casting choice behind this specific actress. I, I don't know. I, I mean, like obviously, the last of show was in production for a while, so she was young. I'm assuming she's a lot older. Right. See, I would because they're like in the teens for the actual like animated movie, they, which is the movie the you should mo- actually be the, watching, anyways. But still, in the movie, they're definitely like sixteen, seventeen. I would assume, like. They, if, I, if she, I would say they're around like they're fifteen and sixteen. I'm not entirely sure, but they're definitely in their teens. Yeah. So to get a you know a young actor or actress to play a young character, same with Tom Holland. Tom Holland was like on um, nineteen, I think, when he started playing Spider Man in uh, Civil War. Like in his early twenties, I know that much. I, I know I know for sure that he was definitely. 20 once Spider-Man Homecoming yeah, was yeah, okay. uh, being in production. Okay. I just don't know. I, I don't know about uh, uh, Civil War. Right. But um, hmm. yeah, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, like, I feel like there's better casting choices. I'm not going to fan cast because then that will aids this podcast terribly. Real age. Real age. But um, I'm just saying like casting. I don't understand the points behind these two actors being vo- being played as Hiccups and Astrid. Granted, I don't understand the point of making this movie in general, but yeah, when it no, comes to this really. specific casting, it doesn't make sense. Like, I think what really might like make or break this casting, though, is the casting of Stoic. That is something you have to not fuck up. I Here's the thing. How to Train Your Dragon has a very specific art style. Oh yeah, definitely. And all the dragons are very, very unique because of said art style. Right. And um, I think if they were to make another movie, they never should. I think that's. I think a trilogy is perfect. It was it was, it was a perfectly fine trilogy. I love it. I, I still actually haven't seen uh two or three. I've seen the first one. It's a masterpiece. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. Um, so, as someone who loves the, the first movie and to see it be remade in live action, and as someone who hates 
live action remakes. <laughs> I just I because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, obviously, Zero has said that um, you know the live action Little Mermaid movie. Um, he he says to him personally, it's good. He likes it, and it fixes issues that the original uh you know had <laughs> no, and that's, that's where I'm like gonna... the real kicker of this whole argument comes in because the whole purpose i i think the purpose of a live action remake is to fix is to not only adjust the story mm-hmm. to a live action format but to fix problems that the original had in a natural way where it still fits with that live yeah. action medium. Because I'm going to say it now. And, oh boy, I'm going to fucking... I'm going to get shit for this one. I think that the 2019 live action Aladdin is better in some ways than the original. Because I had a lot of problems with, problems with the original. That I think that the live action version naturally fixed and fit the live action format. I think that is the that is a good way to make a live action remake. But that that's a th- that's like this is the weird thing like love hate relationship I have with live action remakes. I think that the the entire like concept behind it is fine, but trying mm-hmm. to remake um an animated movie into live action is basically trying to tell you that uh, the li- that the animated hated version is inferior simply because of its animation. Guillermo del Toro said it best. Exactly, Guillermo de- Guillermo del Toro is definitely amazing. But yeah, um, I just I don't get the point behind remaking the the but bringing back to like trying to remake this live action, uh, How to Train Your Dragon. I don't get the point by remaking it because. There's almost like nothing wrong with the original. No, I've seen here's I've the seen too. the movie like three different times, and I, I if anything, I think the humor is a little off. But then again, the humor is a little off in all three movies, anyways. But I, I think that it had great pacing, great characters, stellar stellar animation that cannot be replicated into live action by any means also the score exactly but i i do think that if they want to make a live action remake sure it's never gonna like be on par with the animated movie because if this is going to be like a live action lion king uh, situation where it's basically going to be one-to-one but there's like maybe one or two things different that's really God. all it's if gonna they're be. Go- like why why if you're gonna just make the movie like how it was originally but just live action now what's the point if you're not gonna do anything different and innovative exactly at least with the Aladdin at least with the Aladdin live action movie even if I haven't seen it yet but what I've heard from it um it's at least different from the original it's significantly and I, different um I will say even if I have issues with that original movie, specifically with Jasmine, because sexism, um, <laughs> Genie. Genie. Yeah, Robin Williams I is like unmatched. Ro- Robin Williams is a legend. Right. And I, I he, he stole the show. And he's the reason why people love that movie. Not because the story is good. Not because, oh, it's funny. Not because, all oh, the character. No, Genie. Yeah, yeah, but I mean. Also, you got to Also, you may never had a friend like me. Come on. Yeah. It's iconic. Yeah, but I, I mean, obviously, I really you know, don't. Who... I, think, I think, if anything, the thing that's going to make or break my decision to actually watch this movie is how they cast Stoic. Or, uh-huh. or, because... Stoic, I think, and just like the Vikings in general, is a hard thing to do because of the very specific, like, stylistic design they had in the original yeah. animated movie and how they look so radically different from Hiccup mm-hmm. because of like, the animation. It's almost like the movie was intended to be animated. 
It's crazy. <laughs> and here's the thing, though. I understand, like, obviously with the environments and with, you know, the visual look of the movie, it definitely has that realism feel to it. Right. But it's still animated. It's right. still got a specific art style. And I think that is one thing I really love about DreamWorks. They expand upon what they do, and it's not the one same art style. Um, yeah. Obviously, especially, especially with Puss in Boots. That oh, yeah, is definitely. that is different. That movie is different. And no, that's sorry. also that's... like the only the only thing that's like hesitating me from like fully agreeing with myself. It's like I'm not watching this is because it's DreamWorks. Because DreamWorks, I trust. Disney, mm-hmm. I never know. But DreamWorks, <laughs> I at least have a little bit more faith in to actually make a good fucking movie. So that's, while I don't like the decision behind making a li- live action How to Train a Dragon, I do mm-hmm. trust DreamWorks with their ability to actually make a good storytelling. And while they haven't really made any live action movies, I do trust their ability to try and fit that story into a live action medium. Yeah. Granted, and- it's still live action and I don't like it, but. I, I I at least I'm at least like saving some room for arguments for when we actually see more news come about this. Which, granted, the movie really won't be released until like 2025. I'm I'm assuming. Probably. So this, got re- this got released like like the actual like um news about it being in production was I think around like January or something. So it's yeah. not gonna I mean, be. I mean, they're a also. While. They're also supposedly doing like a Kung Fu Panda four, uh, Shrek five and shit. The so Shrek it's like five. I don't know. The Shrek five. I'm not entirely sure about the Shrek. The Kung oh, Fu no. Panda four was, well, was like accurate. Like the Kung Fu Panda four was like actually going to happen. The Shrek five. Yeah. Not really, but I know Kung Fu Panda four is gonna happen. I'm okay with that. But it's more so <laughs> the fact that I I really I trust DreamWorks to make a good movie. But it's still yeah. like a remake, and I don't know how I feel about it. So I, I'm, I'm holding back a little bit until we see more about this. But realistically, yeah. we're not gonna see anything until 2025. But as it as it is right now, I really don't understand the casting choice. I don't know. But anyways, uh, I think that about wraps up everything. Unless you have anything else you want to talk about. Um. Uh. Uh, burn down schools, do drugs, brush your teeth. <laughs> brush your teeth, got it. But yeah, that's gonna wrap <laughs> up. Uh, Spider Man, Spider Man content this year, look really fucking awesome. Except the comics, don't read the comics. Just watch the movies and play unless the games. Unless it's Miles. Yeah, D- unless it's Miles. Go read Miles comics. Don't don't read uh, Mayday's dad. Anyways, but um, <laughs> yeah, Spider Man Two looks amazing. Cross Spider Us. Really look forward with, forward to it. Uh, as of recording, I am seeing it this Friday. It is now currently Wednesday. Uh-huh. Uh, by the time this recording gets up, it's, uh, we're probably already going to see it. I don't know when we're actually doing a podcast for it. We'll have yeah. to see. But anyways, uh, thank you so much, Dan, for joining the podcast. It was so much fun having you. Go follow yeah. this man. I will. I will commit like several crimes to get a piece of his artwork <laughs> on my wall. No, yeah. I will L- uh, I will frame his artwork like Jay Jonah Jameson frames Spider Man suit in Spider Man Two. Like follow me on Twitter and um Instagram. Both 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 of the the fucking usernames are simply Dan Art. No space, no capitals, none of it. No no uh special characters. It's all one word. Um, for follow easier, it. For easier your time money. for you viewers, I'll just link it in the description below. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Also, give me money. Yes, give him money, and that is going to be everything. And we will see you boys in the next one. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.